Um, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Um, the world is filled with products. I don't like traveling much, but I travel to Indonesia to make a speech here. And I don't like going to a new place, and I'm so nervous for meeting new people. And I become so anxious for entering into a new stage of my life because uncertainty gives me anxiety. I have strong OCD. Um, OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. And according to the definition of a dictionary for OCD, it is like this. OCD is a mental disorder where people feel the need to start perform certain uh, routines repeatedly or have certain thoughts repeatedly. And people are unable to control either the thoughts or the activities for more than a short period of time. And common activities in including, include hand washing and checking things again and again and counting. Traveling is going out of my comfort zone. That's why I wouldn't prefer doing it so much. And I would like, I would like to show you some examples, especially mine as well for OCD. And here's a chair. And as I sit down here. Yeah, let's assume I'm doing something else, like studying. Right? And after some time passes, certain compression or thought hit on me. Uh, is this the right angle of the chair? Uh, is this perfect position? Is this perfect posture? Oh, maybe not. Uh, how about I adjust the angle a little bit so that I can feel more comfortable about it? Oh, yeah, it feels much better now. Uh, but you know, it's not finished. After some time passes, certain compression or thought hit on me again. Is this perfect? Is this right angle? Is this right position? Ah, oh, maybe not. Yeah, I should change it again. Oay, okay, it's better now. Ah, oh. oh, no, this is not perfect. I should change it. Ah, oh. ah, oh. yeah, I do this endlessly. Uh, there's no perfect angle or perfect position for this. And even if there was, I wouldn't be able to make it happen. This is one example of endless compression. You may know the famous American soap opera Friends or Big Bang Theory. Uh, Monica and Friends and Sheldon in Big Bang Theory are the great examples of people with OCD. If you see the picture, she's a clean, the big vacuum cleaner with a smaller one. Like that's a cleaning obsession. And if you see the picture in the middle, he has to sit on the exact same spot where he feels right about it. And he knocks the door three times in the way he feels comfortable with. There are many examples for OCD like this. I suffered quite much from OCD since I was young. I couldn't control certain ritual behaviors. And I looked very weird to many of my friends. So many, many friends ask me, what are you doing, Gene? What are you doing? But I couldn't answer them because there's no proper explanation for this because this is a crazy thing. I'm not a dumb. I may look dumb, but I'm not a dumb. So when I do certain unreasonable repetitive behaviors with irresistible urge, I feel so stupid. And it is also associated with anxiety disorder. So when I like somebody, I become so anxious and be impatient. I repair them away eventually, the persons I like. Because certain anxiety comes up and I become so normal and very weird. So after some experiences like that, I kind of gave up for having deep feelings for somebody so that I wouldn't make any mistakes or get hurt out of it. Yeah, of course, that's not good. We shouldn't give up for having deep feelings for somebody. Yeah, that's not good. But due to the Due to the unintentional long single life, a yeah, single life, yeah. uh, I had more time for contemplation and I became a thinker. Yeah, the famous philosopher Socrates said, by all means, marry. If you get a good wife, you will become happy. And if you get a bad one, you will become a philosopher. <laughs> yeah, I think the point was not only the marriage, but blessing in disguise or looking at the bright side of certain decision or result. I'm not here to talk about how difficult my life could be with OCD or other predispositions that I have. In fact, if it wasn't for my weaknesses, I wouldn't be able to share my stories with you guys at all. 
And if you think about it, when you are weak at something, when you feel inferior at something, you tend to think more and you could obtain deeper understanding or comprehension about it. It was the same to me that I had to think why I was predisposed to such a stupid disorder and cannot control myself sometimes. And during the pondering and suffering, various philosophical epiphany was granted and I could understand others much better with mental disorders and people with their own weaknesses. And the irony is that the OCD and perfectionism and depression were the driving forces that I built to a great community in Korea. I established an English debate and presentation study or club in Korea. At first, I, I founded it because I was cooped up in my, in my house alone and I was depressed. Uh, I just wanted to meet some people, so I started small group at first. But you, you saw my tendency now, you know my tendency now. After some time passes, I start asking questions, questions to myself again. Is it good enough now? Is this perfect? What can be done for making it better? How can I change myself as a better leader? Numerous reflections were required to make a better community, and now the community has become an awesome gathering in terms of people and study and fun activities. The community started from my weaknesses and has been maintained and improved better uh, with my flaw, like obsession. I think Paul in the Bible could have some strong OCD as well. Uh, when I read his verses, I could feel so much about his obsession for presenting the reasons and excuses, and he's trying to have something closer for his opinions all the time. I know that, I can feel that, because I have the same tendency. I'm not saying everything I say is the exact historical fact, but I'm rather saying, even though Paul seemed to have some flaw, due to the weaknesses in him, he was able to complete the great verses. Yeah, I, this year is the turning point of my life, and everything is going quite well, and I came here, I make a speech, I'm very happy about it. Yeah, but up until the last year, I had a difficult time for about two years, and during the difficult period, kind of, I needed an outlet to release my stress, so I started writing down some poem-like writings or phrases. Now I look back at the time and sentences, they look and sound beautiful to me, so I would like to read some of the verses or phrases for us. Thankful and firm in my difficulties and humble in my success. Consistency of devotion is perfected by flexibility of latitude. Understanding paradox can be a real starting point of your life. Arcane harmony between strict mind of negativity and loving heart. Glad I yawn for, eyes open blind with realization of longing. Light shines in tears of reminiscence, dims are faint and gone. The time has frozen long, it'll melt down and tick again with joy. Only in this distance, a zone I can't cross, stay ever in there. Our past cross, ephemeral junction, contains infinity in line. Let the true light shine upon us, and the shadow will be different. Because I had a hard time, the beautiful sentences had ought to be created. As a result, I enjoy and appreciate my own writing now. I talked about blessing disguise, or how things can turn out differently, uh, but it doesn't mean we do nothing and hope for the best. Please don't misunderstand me by thinking that we can justify everything for the way it is, because we should not. Our further efforts and rational thinking are very important throughout all the decisions and all the processes. And also, we should not dwell in the certain boundary that we set up, but we should challenge ourselves more and further so that we can jump it up to the upper level in order to expand the horizon of our understanding. I have made many mistakes in my life to others under a certain compression, and I regret it so much. I had been always sorry for them. But I also grew up a lot on the shattered relationship and gained a lot of wisdom out of it. And I couldn't embrace myself before 
or my identity, but now I'm very embracing myself and my nationality as well. And I'm proud of my own nationality. On the verge of changing of my life, I don't know what's ahead of me, but one thing is for sure. When weak people with vulnerability realize how to balance their life, that epiphany, that wisdom, renders them much stronger and better than any other mere strong people. The world is filled with products. Please remember, you are only stronger because of your weaknesses. Thank you.